One of the biggest challenges that nobody talks about in homeschooling is avoiding burnout because it's a very real thing, especially as you get into midwinter and there's no holiday in sight. Easter is still weeks away. Spring break is a ways away. It's well past Christmas and you're just kind of at the end of your rope. Today I wanted to take a minute to talk to you guys about ways to avoid burnout or to maybe if you feel it happening to kind of pump the brakes a little bit and give yourself a chance to recover some so that way you can finish out the school year strong. First and foremost, I just want to make sure that you're remembering to give yourself some grace when it comes to this. Uh, as a homeschool parent, you've got a lot on your plate. You're managing school and other kids probably and home things and menus and all the stuff that goes along with your house as well as maybe you're working as well or sometimes I know people have a business on the side or perhaps you're really involved in your church or your neighborhood or other community things. So there's a lot going on and it's really easy to let all of that pile up and really start to weigh you down and kind of bog you down, especially in this midwinter time because you're weeks past Christmas, there's still weeks to go until Easter and spring break, there's no end in sight, it's just drudgery. Like all the excitement has worn off. So the weather can be a challenge, your schedule can be a challenge. It's just kind of seems like the end of the year is so far away and there's a light at the end of the tunnel but maybe it's a train that's actually coming to run you over. <laughs> so I just want you to remember to give yourself some grace. Take a minute, acknowledge that you've got a lot going on. Take a look at your plate, look at your schedule and like be okay with the fact that not everything is gonna get done every day and that's all right, like take a deep breath, take a step back, acknowledge what you're doing and just take a moment for yourself and be uh, reminded of all that you're handling and how well you're doing it. You're doing a good job, it's okay. Something that has always really helped me anytime I get into those doldrums or blues or it's just there seems to be no end in sight is to really take a moment and just pause and this might need to become a daily practice. Maybe it's something you can do with your kids before bed or at lunchtime or even before you start your school day. And take a minute and just practice some gratitude, whether that's a gratitude list on the wall that you put up or on your chalkboard or in a journal or something. But take a minute and write down like three to five things every day that you're thankful for. And maybe it's something like different every day. Like say, make the rule for yourself that you can't be thankful even though you can, but make the rule that you can't put the same thing on the list twice. Or maybe you make it, it has to be a different kind of thing each day. So today we're thankful for five square things and tomorrow we're thankful for five red things. And you like change up the shape and the color of them or things that I'm thankful that uh, money didn't buy. Uh, things I'm thankful for that someone else gave me, you know, and just take a minute and practice that gratitude. I find that when you're focusing on finding things to be thankful for, you start to notice more and more and more things without even focusing on it that you're thankful for. And you modeling that for your kids is such a great example for them. And even having them participate in it can pull them out of that negativity as well. Sometimes you've practiced the gratitude, you've given yourself grace, and you're still just feeling that weight on you. Maybe it's time to shake things up, you know? Maybe instead of doing the same thing every day, like look at your homeschool schedule and see what you can rearrange and switch out, you know? Maybe you do an art appreciation day and you go to the local art museum and you take the time to find like on Amazon, I know they have like paint by number for classic artists. And so maybe you're doing paint by number for Picasso <laughs> and like you and your kids all do that and you watch a YouTube video on how to do watercolors and you, Take a minute to go like look at art around your house and like, do you have art in your house? Is there art in someone else's house that you like? like? Maybe find some fun documentaries on it, that kind of thing. Do for history, it could be how they restore art and look up a documentary on that. Or, you know, it's a sunny day, it's nice weather, pack everybody up, go to the zoo. Like get out of the house, walk around, look at animals, take pictures. Everybody talks about their favorite animal, tries to count the stripes on the zebra. Like, another way you can shake things up is maybe you do a, uh, tea time every day and you just institute that for a couple weeks. Plan a family movie night, you know, or a family game night, or maybe you do a day of game schooling and you just play board games all day instead of doing anything out of a workbook or a worksheet. Like do something to shake up the day because a lot of times you can get in that rhythm of just one day after the next, after the next, after the next, and pretty soon you're just plodding along and you feel like there's no forward momentum being made. And so sometimes you just need to shake things up and do something a little bit different and that's okay. 
one thing that I definitely don't want you to say is never a possibility is to just take a break. Maybe you did the gratitude and you tried shaking things up, but it's just so hard to keep going. Give yourself a break. It's okay. Like, take a day off. Take a week off. Maybe you just need to do a hard stop on everything and nobody's doing any school this week. We're just working on, you know, organizing the closets and changing all the sheets on the beds and <laughs> like doing some winter cleaning and that's fine. And then the next week you add back in math, but everybody's still just focusing on gratitude and just getting along and focusing on our relationships. And then the next week you add back in reading. And so you're doing math and reading and house stuff. And then you add back in, you know, and you just slowly build back up to your full schedule. Like, that's okay. You can do that. And maybe you're saying, well, Megan, that's easy for you to say, but I'm not a home, year round homeschooler. We've got this many days to get in. Maybe summer needs to be a little bit shorter this year. Maybe instead of taking two weeks for spring break in April, you take a week now and you take a week in April. Like just give yourself the grace to be able to take a break. Part of homeschooling is that you can set the schedule for what works for your family and pushing through to the point where everybody is burnt out is not beneficial for you and it's not gonna put a good taste in your mouth, a good attitude in your heart and your kids are gonna pick up on that and they're gonna feel the same way. Lastly, I just wanna say, make sure you're taking time to seek out inspiration. Maybe you need to have a weekend where you talk with your husband and you're like, you know what? I just really need you to be on dad duty this weekend if you can. Or maybe he works weekends and it's easier for him to do in the middle of the week. Okay, take a Wednesday <laughs> and be like, I need, you know, dad, you take the kids to the zoo. I just need a minute to sit at home and look up podcasts or talks from your favorite homeschool inspiration spots and just soak that in and just Maybe, I know there are a lot of resources that you can find online for homeschooling seminars and things like that that they then publish later online and you can purchase the talks for. Take some time to listen to that. Or maybe it's your favorite author but you don't have the time to read her book. Okay, then find a podcast that she's being interviewed on and listen to her talk on there. Like, let that be inspirational to you. Maybe you find inspiration in taking some time to watch one of your favorite movies. Like for me, it's Anne of Green Gables. I love Anne of Green Gables. Um, you know, seek some inspiration, watch your favorite movie, work on a craft project. Like, Maybe it's hanging out with somebody that inspires you. So phone up that friend, schedule a time for the two of you to have time together. Maybe it's that you need to go to the art museum or the science museum to be inspired and remember what you loved about that and what made you passionate about it. Maybe there's a botanical gardens close by that you can go to and just take a good book, go to the botanical gardens for the day, have some mom time and just focus on that. Maybe it's you taking just a long hot bath and you buy the scented candle and you buy the fancy bath bomb and you do that so you can just sit and relax and just recharge yourself. As you're homeschooling and going through life, it's really easy to put yourself last constantly but if you are always run down and you're always feeling defeated, your kids are gonna pick up on that and they're gonna notice that. And you might notice them being a little more um, apologetic, a little more, oh no, I'm so, so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Or maybe they're just like a little more sensitive or they don't wanna come talk to you. It's cause they can tell that something's wrong and they're worried that it's them. And so you don't want your kid to get the impression that they're what's wrong with your life. You want them to see a mom that takes care of yourself, a mom that isn't selfish. I'm not saying you're the highest priority in your life, but I am saying that you should be a priority in your life and taking care of yourself should be something that is on your to-do list. And it should be something that gets done, not constantly pushed to the next day. So mom, I hope this encouraged you today to don't give up. I realize that a lot of times when we start the school year, we have this mindset of winter is coming. <laughs> we uh, kind of have that dread, but don't, don't give in to that. It's okay. Give yourself some grace. Take some time to recharge your batteries and hopefully this will help you out and we'll see you next week.